begin the Karan Daf from Sechtik Sugas Daf Mem Dal. We begin three lines down at the top of the Amud, where the Gemara is in the middle of a discussion with the previous Daf. We had mentioned the previous Mishnah, which on the previous Daf and Amud Beis, which we were continuing the theme of the, whatever the daughter does goes to the father. That was the theme of this parrot, Narish and Spatato, that our class is, well, who, where does it go to? Go to the father. So that got the Gemara into a discussion regarding the collection of the Ksuba, because we, we spoke about a case that if she got engaged, got divorced, got engaged, got widowed, now the Ksubas go to the father. It's the father's rights. So the Gemara wanted to know when is the collection happening from, because we had a Machlekes in the Mishnah, uh, if, the, if she gets, uh, the, regarding the second Ksuba, who's going to get it? She got married. So we had a teaching from Rav Huna, who said that, Okay, the, those which are from the Takanas Chacham, 100, 200, 200, that's from the Eris. The additions which the Chassam is adding on his own, that's from the Nisuin, that's going to be from the later date. It's on that teaching that uh, we, the Gemara introduced a question. Did Rabbuna really say that? But he had another teaching that said that if you had two Ksubas, one of 200, one of 300, Rabbuna said, look, it's your choice. If you want to get the one of 200, so you get them the first time. If you get the one of 300, you're going to get them the later date. The significance of that is, even though you're going to get more, but you're only going to be able to collect from the kuchas from that later date, not from the early date. And I think more wanted to know if that's the case. What do you mean the 300? That 200 should be allowed to get from the earlier time to that the and the 100 from the later one. That's what the Gemara continued, and it often said that no, that they're, that they're different because it didn't add on. The 300 is its own thing, saying, look, you know, this is independent. You want to get this, it's going to have to be from a later date, and therefore you must be Michael from the first Shibud. That was the teaching of Huna, and that's how the Gemara is going to discuss that based and contrast that with another teaching of Rav Nachman. Shirt corresponds with Kazik and Cheskel, to enter the Vachem, which I'm going to do today's daf. Some things discussed in today's daf are the concept of Shnei Shtar Sayyidim Zechazel. When you have two subsequent documents, one document on the earlier date, and then a later one, what the halach is going to be. Then the daf continues with the halach of Nair Marasa regarding the, which is a girl who is engaged, which the halacha is either that she could be punished with chenek, which is what it classically is what a regular Asian says a married woman, but there are cases which that's the biblical distinction of a naira or an engaged naira, that she could be punished with skila, and that would be even without Pesach Bezavi, although the Pesach says that she has to be stoned by the entry of her father's household, even if she doesn't, we'll see what cases that there are going to be differences. Additionally, we have a machlekes and Amid Beis regarding the eligibility of a Nari Yisoyma for the Knesset of Meitzah Although generally, a Meitzah what happens is the guy gets married, he comes the next month to court and says to the Rav, he says, I, I didn't learn Metzasi Besulam, I didn't find her to be a virgin. Now what happens if she's the Yisoyma, where there is no father? If it comes to the father and says to play me, there's no there's no bitcha, if there's going to be the knas of the hundred coins of the Meitzah Shema. Some of the important terms of the concept we discussed in today's daf are the classic halacha star sheish by Christ, which is if there's a document that has res- insurance, you're taking responsibility, government Shabbat, and that can be collected not only from his, pro- his personal assets, but that which he sold off, there's a lien on all his property, anyone who subsequently buys, you can collect from them too. Naim Rasa Shazinsa, like we said, is that if a girl is engaged, specifically engaged, and she's Mazana, there's the punishment of Skila, which is a more severe, stringent punishment, Whereas in the soup, she's already married, she's in, so then she only gets chenek. Maitse Shamra, someone who spreads a bad word about the, his new a bride that he just got married to the night before. Now, look, he gets like, he gets mal, he gets mal, he also has to pay 100 silver coins to the girl's father. So we're getting the current that's Memdal, three lines down at the top of the Amit, Oman Bar. We, this is going on Rav Huna, as we mentioned that he said a teaching that if there's two documents, he gave us what two kusubas written on two different dates. So, Rebbe Huna had said, if you want to, Iboyi Bahai Gavya, Iboyi Bahai Gavya, if you want, you can collect the one that was for 200, therefore you can collect from the earlier date, from any Lekuchas that are bought, any consume, any people that bought from your father, from the, from, from the estate, they could go ahead and collect from. And, or if she wants, you can collect from 300, which is from, if the husband, uh, only from a later date, that from his assets that were sold off, but then you'll get 300. Says the Gemara, Let's say this teaching of Rav Huna disagrees with Rav Nachman. Why? Because Rav Nachman said the following teaching. He says, Shnei Shtar is if it's two documents on one field, either of a sale or of a gift, but Hayyitzim is Echazeh. Meaning, Ruben wrote to Shimon that I'm selling you this field or gifting you this field, and he wrote two documents, same document, one in Nisan and one in Sivan. Says Rav Nachman, you know what that means? Beetel Shenius Edition. The second document is nullifying the first document. 
And therefore, if let's say there was a chrayis, insurance, take responsibility, I'm selling you this, and if anything happens, you could come back and collect from me, then he could only collect from the second date. Because why are you writing a second document? Obviously, that's nullifying and saying the first one was void, and we're doing it based on the second one. The question is, here also, in Rav Hunis Halacha, when there's two ksubais for the woman, you should say that the first one is nullified, and she's being meichel for the first lady. That's not what Rav Hunis said. Rav Hunis said she could choose. Either 200 from the earlier or 300 from the later. So that seems to disagree with Rav Nachman's teaching. He said the second one automatically is mavatal the first one. Says the Gemara, no, not necessarily. Love me, my law. Didn't we see on this teaching of Rav Nachman that Amr Rav Papa Rav Papa had said, who might Rav Nachman? Nachman, however, would agree in the following case: the Eisiv Beidik. If let's say the second document is not the same exact, even if you add on just one more tree, letaysefes kasmi. So why are you writing another document? Is not to nullify the first one. It's actually coming to add on. That if you want to collect from the second day, you know what? <laughs> Besides the principle that we had sold, there's an addition that I'm going to give you. If you want to use the first one because it's earlier, fine, you won't get the addition. So then Rav Nathan agrees that the second one is not being mavat from the first one. Ah, so the same thing in our case of Ravuna. What do you mean? He added on something in the later Ksuba instead of 200, it could be 300. So that's exactly what Rav Huna said. Rav Nathan does not disagree. Rav Nathan only says the second one is the first one if there's no difference. Why are you writing another get? Uh, another another star? Must have been the bin bottle, the first one. But if you're adding on something else, oh, of course, it's not bin bottle. Let's come in to say you have a choice. That's exactly what Rafuna said that you have the choice. Now, Gufa, the Gemara goes back in this classic Tamanic style. Once we brought in this teaching of Nathan, because we thought it contradicted Rafuna, we did, brought in that teaching, actually, Rafuna, to contradict the different teaching of Rafuna. So now the Gemara discusses that teaching. Gufa, Omar of Nathan. So, Shnei Shtar Sayyidim Mizachazet. There's two documents that are produced one after the other. So, look, we just quoted from Nachman, Bittl Shein Sedition. The second one, since it's the same thing, why are you writing it over again in Siba and you did in Nisan? It's saying that we're voting the first one. Okay. But I'm not Papa, we quoted this just before. Oh, so he qualifies and he says, However, well, you're Nachman. Nachman agrees. The Isis by Dikla. If you add on even one more palm tree, a thousand trees, you add on one more, let the Sebus cast, but that means to say that no, you didn't write the second one to Nello by the first one. You wrote it because you're adding on something. Fine. But now, related to that, the Gemara brings the following halach. Pshita. The Gemara says, okay, what's obvious to us is as follows. <coughs> if, Rishin b'mecher, if the first one was a, se- was a document of a sale, the second one is a document of a gift. So the same property to the same people, but you're changing it. The first one was written as a sale, the second one was written as a gift. Oh, so, so everyone would agree. Why is he writing the second one? That is just to make the strength of the recipient stronger, that even if you're not adding on anything, it's not nullifying the first one. Rather, Dino de Bar Metzra. Because the halacha of the one who's on the boundary, on the border of that property. Meaning, because the halacha that the Bar Metzra, the neighbor, he could contest. And he could say, hey, I get first rights because it's, it's on my boundary. Now, the halacha is brought in Baba Messiah Kof Chesma Beis. That a gift has no halacha ba metzer. Because what is ba metzer? Ba says, what are you doing coming here to me? I need to extend my property. I, I have rights. You go buy somewhere else. A gift, you can't say go buy somewhere else. It was given to me for free as a gift. So therefore, if the second document is written as a gift, you can't say, oh, what do you mean why am I writing it over? It's, it's a big difference. It was to say to give him the strength of a bar metzer, of the, of the, that he shouldn't be bothered by bar metzer, that he should be able to get it as a gift. So it's not being mavat the first one. You can still get from the lukuches from the first date. Why are you writing it over again? It's just to be meyap b'koicher to give him the strength that he doesn't have to be bothered by the neighbor saying, "What are you doing? Get out of here! Let me have the rights. I'll buy it off, and you go somewhere else." That's why you're writing it over a second time. And because she, all the more so the other way around. Every rishon b'matana, if the first one was written as a gift, even shav to shimon, I'm giving you a gift of a thousand uh, of, of this of this field. Then they write another a document a few months later that I'm selling it to him. You know why? It's not saying that we're nullifying because nothing changed. It's the same property. No, because I mean, we say Mishum Din is about because of him. He's writing it as a sale because of creditors. Meaning, if a creditor comes and grabs away from the recipient, what essentially Rubin is doing is he's accepting responsibility with the second document that then the recipient could go and collect from him the monies that are written over here. So again, he's strengthening the, the, the recipient. So it's not for no reason. It's not for naught that we're writing it over a second time. Usually, Rav Nachman's teaching is, why are you writing it over? 
Must have been, because the first one we're not utilizing, as we're actually going to explain in a second, what that, what that would look like. But if you change it from Mecha to Matan, or Matan to the Mecha, we know why you're doing it, because you're giving him a certain benefit he would not have had, either a Bametzer or a Baal and therefore that's, you don't have to change anything, you don't have to be adding on anything, even though would agree that you could choose, that it's not nullifying the first one. Now, but, what is the question is as follows. At least Shnei Bamecha, but both of them are a sale, or Shnei Bamecha, but both are a gift. So that, Rav Nachman had said, Beit L'shein Esayish, and Rapunda could agree with that, we just, Rapunda was saying, as Rav Nachman agrees, when you're changing something, that then you could choose. But if it's the same exact to Rav Nachman, the second one is voiding the first one, because he's not adding on anything, and there's no difference. The question is, my time. What's the reason, the principle beneath this idea, that the second one's going to nullify the first one? So we actually have machlekes, <laughs> very similar, but there's going to be ramifications of this machlekes. Rav Mame says, Amer, because we're going to say, I do, I do it. That he, had, he, he admits the, the, that the, the owner of the document is, is agreeing that the first one was forged. And therefore he's agreeable to collect from the date of the second one. Because you wrote over the same thing, why are you guys writing it over? It must have been because we're agreeing that this was forged, that this was not a good document. Because why would you write over the same exact document a few months later? That's one shot. Rav Achami says, no. What, I'm, what I would say is that the recipient is being is pardoning the lien that he has on this guy's property. It's very difficult. The guy has a lien on his property from a certain date. And he's being like, let's start over again. No problem. I'll, I'll, I'll only take insurance from this later date. And that's why writing over the document a second time. So the Gemara says, my but now what's the difference? Isn't that the same thing? Who cares if because he, he gets forged or because it's, it's his Michael. Either way, you can't get it from the first one. What would be the difference? So the Gemara actually says it's very, there are three fundamental differences um, between these two interpretations. Ikhbinaya, first of all, is Aru Sahabi, about creating a flaw in the witnesses that are signed on the first document, which Rashi makes it sound like you actually can make this flaw. Taysa says that would be impossible. Rather, it means to say that the recipient himself, if he has another document that these witnesses are signed on, that would be a flaw for his document because he agrees that they're possible. According to Raphram, he said, the way he explained it, is that the guy's agreeing that the first document must be forged. Why are you writing it over a second time? Oh, it's forged. It means these witnesses are false or witnesses. So you can't use them a second. If you have another document with these guys, you can't use them because they're to show him that they're not valid witnesses. So that document would be possible. Could Ravacha, not do it, they're not possible. It's just the guy with Michael on the Shibu. So they can be kosher. So that's one document regarding the Aru Sahabi invalidating the Edom of the first time. A second thing, says the Gemara, is Ulishlume Pedi. To pay back the produce that the Lekeach, this recipient, had eaten between the dates of the first document and the second document. <coughs> According to Raphim, you got to pay up because you're agreeing that this was not a valid document the first time around. Whereas, according to, uh, according to Rav Asa, you don't have to pay because it's. Uh, it's, 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 it's uh, <coughs> The, the, according to the Mandama, so the Kerf does not reimburse the Meich for the profits. He did own the field during this period. He's just being Meichel on the Shibut. So the, the question is, is it a, it's a Be'etzim, or is just the guy's being Meichel on the Shibut? But of course, I, I owned it. According to the Mandama, I do, I do, the Kerf has to reimburse the Meichel of the profits. He didn't own the field during this period. That was not a valid uh, sale. The, the, that document was not, was not correct. And the third difference is, Ula Taska, is to pay the taxes on the property between the first date and the second date. And they're all similar ideas. According to Raphram, so he says, you're admitting that this was not a valid document, the first one. So then the seller has to pay the taxes because I never owned it. It wasn't about we're writing the document now for the first time, really, now the second time. First one was not valid. Where according to Ravacha, the consumer has to go ahead and pay because you owned it. You've been moichel on the Shiva? Fine, that's your, that's your desire, you're, 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 you're foregoing on the lien. But, but regarding actual ownership, of course you owned it, and therefore you would have to pay taxes. So those are three differences between those three different shops. Now, the Gemara goes back, what really started the conversation on the previous daf, earlier, earlier, was, says the Gemara, have a lot of What's the question? We had asked that the words of the Gemara was, omigva me'imas gavi. When do you collect the, the ksuba from? Rashi had explained, that we saw in the Mishnah, the way we explained in the Gemara, 
that even the rights of the father is not from the time of the Aris and even according to Yehuda. Because we said Yehuda agrees that his daughter got engaged and then became a Megiddus. He said that we see that you go based on the writing. So the question the Gemara had had that regarding collecting from the Kukas, when could you collect from the Mishabadim? Is it from the time of the Aresin? Because in that time is when the Chiva the Tekana the Rabban, the Ksuba stars. Or is it from the time of the writing, which is, that's when it becomes a middle of Bishtar. So we actually had a Machlekes. We had Rav Huna who said, depends which part. And that's what got us into this whole conversation. Rav Huna said, the, the primary principle of the Ksuba, which is everyone has to give, if it's a, a Bu'ula 100 or Vesula 200, that's from the Aresin. That's when you get engaged. The Tesevist the edition, that's when, this, that's when you write the Ksuba. Ravasi said, no, No, she'd michael on that, on, on when, when it happens, when the engagement happens. It's both of them, even the principle is only when you end up writing the Kshubu, which is the marriage. So we didn't, that was the Machleke. So we got in the conversation. Did Ravuna really say that? I, Ravuna says a different teaching. And then we said, oh, that's not difficult, but that seems to contradict Rav Nachman. We said, no, it doesn't contradict Rav Nachman. And now we're coming back full circle to the discussions. So what is the halacha regarding the Ksuba? Who, how are we paskening regarding that, when do you collect? Is there a difference between the Ikka Ksuba and the Tesef Ksuba, like the way Rav Huna said it? Or is it the way Rav Asi said that, no, echadzeh, echadzeh, whether it's the primary or the additions, it's always going to be Minasuma when you get married and you actually write the Ksuba. So the Gemara says, Toshalat's being a riot. He says, Mano Messiah, that the, the, the first hundred or the two hundred, again, depending if you're a Bu'ula or Basula, if it's the first time or not. So that's Mina Eris. That's when you get engaged. The Tesef is Mina and the additions that the Chassan adds on, which is not from Takan's Chum, so it's not there in the inherent when you get engaged. It's when you actually write it. That's, that's Mina Suin when you, when you get married. You could write the Ketubah right before you get married. That's like Rapuna had said, that it depends for which part. Chama and the sages say, no, echad zebe, echad zebe, and then No, both of them are from when you get married. And that's like the other opinion. No, the halach is, echad zebe, echad zebe, and Yes, both of them are, like the way Rabbi Asi said, is when you get married, which is when you write in the Ksub. And therefore, it's not like Rav Huna, and it's both going to be from the time of the Now, the Gemara continues with the, a related discussion regarding the, the, the girl who gets married which essentially that was the, how we opened up the Masechta. Masechta was, and all the themes were related to this idea about the Sulem, that the, the, that's really what the Ksuba is based on, on uh, to some level. The, the fundamental difference in the Ksuba is between the Basula or Baula. You get 100, you get 200. So we opened up the Masechta saying this idea of Basula and this is Ravi, which he gets up the next morning and he says, hey, Lebetzasi, Lebetzcha Basulam. And that got us into a discussion even in the later program, in the third and the fourth paragraph, over here discussing regarding the Nara, Hamarasa, that what happens is that if the woman is violated or seduced, that, that's also regarding the basulam. And now we're going back to a related halach of Maiti Shemra. Maiti Shemra is the same idea, just in the false, in the, in the, in the fake news, which is that if Shitaka didn't have basulam, eh, I want my money back, or whatever, it's Mekhtai, it's this and that, the whole thing regarding the Ksuba. But what happens if he makes it up? He comes the next one and says, I didn't find. And he's spreading false rumors and he's lying. That's where our Mishnah gets into a discussion regarding that. So says the Mishnah, Hagiyadis, a, a woman who converted, Shinizgaida beat the that her daughter converted with her. Now, Tais discusses, it says, why can't we just say that the girl converted by herself? Why does she have to be with her mother? The reason is because we're talking about a girl under three. And as Tais says, that's not normal for a girl under three to be converted. The, the courts are not going to do it unless she's coming with her mother. Additionally, Tesla says, because we wanted to say one of the cases is if she was conceived not in sanctity, meaning her mother was still a non-Jew uh, when she converted, but she was born in sanctity, because, because the, the birth was when she was really Jewish. So they were talking about a young girl, a young Gyaris, who she's converting with her mother. But it's not really, that's not really the relevant part. The relevant part is that she's a Gyaris. And Vizinsa, when she was engaged as a Naira, she was mezal. Now, classically, that's the halacha of naira hamarosa. Naira hamarosa, a biblical uh, case that if you have a girl that's a naira, a, 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 a pubescent girl who is engaged, and she's mezana, she gets a very unique punishment of skila. Here, she's the same situation. She's a Jewish girl who's engaged as a naira. However, she's not going to get skila. She's going to get 
strangulation, like a regular married woman, even if she converted <coughs> under the age of three, which she has a cheskis pesula, but presuming that she's a virgin, because even if she had been mezana when she was still a non-Jewess, she was two years old, those pesulim come back. So why is she not getting skila? Because when the Torah had skila by Naimarasa is specifically a Jewish girl, which was born Jewish. Ki asasa nevola bi Yisrael, says the Pasuk, because a disgrace was done with, amongst the Jewish people, that excludes a Giyayis. And, so therefore she doesn't get chenek. Also, ain't no lo pesach beisa'av, we don't have to take her out to our father's household, like we do by the Naimar Rasa, to, to, to execute her. And we'll let me So if, let's say the husband was lying, and his witnesses were zenimen, they were also lying, it doesn't make a difference. He doesn't have the, to pay the penalty of the hundred silver coins because the whole parasha was written by Yisrael and the Giyotis, although she's a Jewish woman with halacha, but she's not big Yisrael. And therefore, the halachas of skila, of pesel bezaah, of a hundred silver would not apply by this woman. Now, but let's say, let's say, yes, her mother conceived her when she was not Jewish, but the birth... She was a pregnant woman when she was converting, and she was born into a Jewish family. So then, Hadezu Beskila. I think going to explain the source for this. But then this girl is considered be Israel. She was born as, in, as, as a, in the Jewish, uh, from a Jewish mother, and therefore she's going to get Skila. But, but still, even though she gets Skila, she does not have to be stoned by her father's household. And and if the husband was lying, he doesn't pay, so it's an interesting case. She will be qualified for skila, but she's not going to have to be stoned by her father's uh, entryway of his house. And if the husband was lying, he's not going to have to pay the hundred uh, sloim. Now, let's say a third case. Let's say, actually, her pregnancy and her birth were in sanctity, meaning the mother had already converted before she could see. Oh, then she's like a Jewish girl of all halachas, and therefore she has the halacha of being stoned by Pesach Bezaab, and if the husband's lying, he has to pay the hundred slot. Now, yesh la'ab, so the, the Mishnah rounds it off. If she has a father, but she does not have an entry of a father's household, meaning, for example, he's homeless, doesn't have a house, but we're talking about a Jewish girl, not about the case of Giyavis. Or let's say the other way around. Let's say Yishla Pesach Bezaab. Let's say she has her father's entry way of a house. But Be'elav, father's not alive. Hadezah Veskila doesn't make a difference. She's still going to get stoned. Why? Because when Yishla Pesach Bezaab, it doesn't say the entry of the father's household. And the mitzvah. That's just like a mitzvah. Chase discusses why sometimes we say the words are ma'ak and sometimes not. But that's what the mission is telling us. That although it says you have to be stoned by the Pesach Bezaab, it doesn't live. I mean, it has to. That's the mitzvah. If, if there's a father. And if he has a home, then that's what you do. But if not, I'm she's still going to get stoned. She's looking at skill of the halach of nine of us. So the Gemara continues to come and says, But where do we know this halach That if she was conceived, meaning the mother was not Jewish yet, but she was born the Kedusha, that then you're telling me that she's going to get the halach of a skill. So Omar Shlakesh, he says, Because Omar Kral, the Pasuk says in Devar, the Pasuk says that. Uskalua, the, 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 the Pasuk uh, is earlier there, says the words that you're going to stone her. Kol all the members of our city with stones. And the words are Vamesa, and she's going to die. Now, to say Vamesa is going to die is superfluous. Obviously, if they're all stoning her, and that's what saying she's going to die. So what's Vamesa? So that's a rabbis. That terminology is coming to include. What's it coming to include? Even even if she was conceived not in the state of sanctity, her mother was not Jewish yet. But if she was at least born when her mother was Jewish, to say Bamesa, she's gonna die, including even that case, is gonna be Allah Skila. So if that's the case, as we pointed out in the Mishnah, so why are you only making her halfway Jewish? Meaning, Milkanami Lil Milki, then if the husband was lying and he spread false rumors about her. Why do you say that he doesn't have the punishments? He should get lashes. Who may sell another He should have to be the hundred slayim. What? Why are you only saying that she? If she was, if it's real, if it's true, she gets stoned. If it's false, he doesn't get the punishment. What's the difference? Why not? Aren't you saying that she's included in the parasha of Namarosa? <coughs> Makra, yeah, no, because the pasuk said Vamesa. Where are we including her from? From the word, and she's gonna die. Vamesa <coughs> in the shops, that comes to tell us that for death she's included. But like, nah, 
but not for the penalty, meaning if he's lying, then, then she does not get that we don't know her to be as be Yisrael. We only know from her Nibu. The Nibu is only telling us to regard not Lacha of Mesa, of Skila. Not for when he's lying that she should get the Kanaz and that he should get lashes. But then the Gemara says, okay, but even maybe say, How do you know to include even if she was conceived not in Kedusha? And but born in Kedusha, maybe it's only if she was conceived and born in the state of Kedusha. Maybe even though her mother is a Giyaitis, but three years after she converted, then she conceived and gave birth. Maybe that's the case we're including. How do you know that even if she was conceived, she'll be Kedusha? So he's like, no, he is real, it's That's a regular Jewish girl. Well, that's a regular be Yisrael. Why would we think that we need a Reba for that? The Reba can't be including that. Then says, okay, let me ask you the other way around. <coughs> Maybe Lenabas had also like Dasa and Shalai Bikdusha. Maybe it's coming to include Bamesa is, even if she was conceived and born before the mother converted, and then she converted with her mother. Maybe that's the case we're coming to include. <coughs> so, if that's the case, be Yisrael. You say, Ki Asa Navala be Yisrael, Maya Hamilai. What's that coming to tell us? Be Yisrael is coming to exclude someone. Who are you excluding? You want to include even Hadassah Balaydasa Shalai Bikdusha, even if she converted. Then, then what, what would be this included? So obviously it's, it's including this med- middle case of a Yedasa Shalabik Dusha, but with a Yedasa Dusha, that's the case that's coming to include. Now, related to this topic about how to expound the Sukkim of the Parsha of this Naim Arasa, so I'm going to be Yusei Bar Hanin. It says, HaMaitzi Shemna Ali Yisayman. If someone goes ahead and spreads rumors about a, a, a girl that's an orphan, so gets married, and he gets up the next morning, obviously there's no father to go to. He says, she's an orphan, but he's spreading rumors saying, eh, she didn't have basula. So says Rabbi Yisrael, he's exempt like, from the knas of a hundred sloim. Why? Because she never says in the bottom, and you give it to the father of the girl, there's two in this case where there's no father. If there's no father, so then you can't fulfill now, most of Rebusa are Ovid. Be tame as some say Rebusa bear Zvita. Pasitan Shemois Emoi Nemoi Naviha. Therefore, this is part, this Pasit is by what's the partial what's called Mafata. When she was seduced, he seduced her and, 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 he, and he was with her. Where the Pasit could have said Vim Yemoi. If, if he's going to refuse, he says, I don't want you to take my daughter. But it doesn't. It says a double terminology. It's Vimoi Nemoi which tells us that whether the father's alive and he refuses, whether the father's not around and she refuses, So that's telling us that who's included in this parasha, who, who's refusing, either him or her, when she refusing, when the father's not around. Oh, the father's not around, so that includes the Yisema, the Kanas, the Rebbe he says that obviously that Yisema does have the Kanas of Oynes and Mephata. Now Rashi says, Oh, so obviously you see that even though it says by Oynes, but not Slavi Naira, you give it to the father of the girl, and Oynes and Mafata we learn out from each other. So although the ones by Mafata and by Oynes, but you see that you be high for Knas on the Yusayim. Now if you're going to say, wait a second, here it's different, because the Torah is including a Yusayim from the extra word Moin. But regarding Moin Shabra, we don't have a Ribui. So what are you asking on this teaching? Of Rabbi Yisib Bar Chanino, that if someone's Moitzi Shema on the Yisayma, he's going to be Potter. I, how can you say that? Don't we see that a Yisayma is included in the parasha? Well, those are two different things. One is regarding the, the halacha of Moitzi Shema, and one is regarding the halacha of Oynes uh, Mafat. Uh, it's not the same thing. One is if a woman was seduced or, or, or violated. So that's going to be, yeah, even the Yisayma. What does it have to do with the halacha of a mighty shamra? Yeah, they're both regarding the sulam, but what I have is one's, one's halacha of spreading false rumors about a girl, and one is if he actually committed a, a crime of having violated or seduced a girl. So that's, that's by a, a Yisayma. What does it have to do with how, how you're asking, as says Rashi, on, on the halacha of shamra? So it says Rashi that, no, here also, the truth is, by Unis Mafata, that we don't really know that the Yisayma is included because of a ribuy, because of like the extra word money. Rather, both her and her father could stop the marriage from the from the from the rinkers. As Gemara says, Nail and Iris on the from the Testament base, and the Yisayim is not inclu- is not is not included from here. It's just that the Tana holds that the father that the pasuk was mentioning is not coming to exclude a Yisayim from the Knas. 
Rather, just coming to tell us that the knas is going to go to the father and not the heart, but not excluding when there is no father. So therefore, the same thing should be when it says that you give it to the father of the girl, that by Mamei Tzishama, that should not mean to tell us that that will exclude a case when there's no father. So Rashi really changes the whole understanding of the Gemara. He's saying it's not really from the Riboy of Moti Yemoi. He's saying, no, that we know the girl could refuse. And, but, but I, it says the, the word avia by, 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 so therefore, that's the difficulty on the teaching of Rabbi Yisab al-Khanina. How can you say, if you might show on the Yisab al-Khanina, it says, what do you mean? You see, Aynas Mabata also said you give it to the father of the Naira, and, and if he's not alive, you see that she's, she'll still get it. So how can you say that Avi is excluding if there's no father? So he asked the question, and he answered it. He says, this that it said, that Yisayma, uh, that the Tana is telling us, that there's going to be knas by mafata, it's not true. If it says avi anayra, there has to be a father. And therefore, by the halacha of Meitzah Shemra, we said if there's no father, there's no knas. The Yisemi Ketan is not getting knas by Meitzah Shemra. And the truth is, even though Ainus Mavata, also she wouldn't get. What do you mean? Doesn't the Baratan, didn't we just quote a Bryce that says that we're including Yisemi for knas? That's Bebola Ba'acha Kachnes Yasma. That means to say, she, she only became a Yisemi after the story happened. And therefore, no, the truth is, Avi HaNairu, when it says the father of the girl, that excludes the assignment. If at the time of the seduction, there was no father, yes, she would not get a knas. And there would be no halacha maitzah shamda. <coughs> there they were saying that it's going to go to the assignment for knas is if the father died after the story. It's just saying, okay, we're including that she's going to get it. But of course, Avi HaNairu excludes a assignment. Now, this was all interpreting if you hold like Rabbi Yisab Khanina, that a Mitzvah Shem on Yisab is going to be pot. However, the Gemara brings Rav Amar, he says, they're actually chayah. He says that no, that you're actually going to be liable if you're being Mitzvah Shem on Yisab. So he disagrees with Allah. Rabbi Yisab Khanina says you're going to be And he brought a pasig, which excludes that there's no father, which we asked on uh, from Oyn Svafat, and we answered, we said, oh, that's only Yisab that became afterwards Yisab. Rabbi disagrees, he says no. Where do I get this from? The Tony Ami. So he quotes a bracer that Ami teaches. It says in the Pasig that you're going to punish this guy a hundred silver coins and you're going to give to the father of the girl because he spread a false rumor on a virgin of the Jewish people, which teaches us and not a basula of converts. Now, that's what the Pasuk of Besul Das Yisrael, what, what you have to say, Besul Das Yisrael, of course, from a Jewish people. No, Yisrael is an extra word come tell us to exclude if it was from Gerim. Now, as Rashi points out, a Besul of Gerim is by default a Yisrael. Why, why is a Besul of Gerim by default a Yisrael? She has parents. No, the Torah is mafkir, it makes it like, as if there is no descendants by non-Jews. Like, almost like donkeys. Like it says, a Pasuk in Yechezko, Vizir Masusim Zeramtam which that's a terminology of semen, which, which sprays forth like water. And it, it's like as if she doesn't have a father. And still you need a Pasig to exclude Besulah's Gedim. Oh, it says the Gemara, yeah, my Bishlam, maybe you're going to say, Ki that an equivalent case by a Jewish girl, meaning every Bas Gedim is essentially a, ba- a Yisayim, because she has no father. I mean, has no father, she has no father. No, 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 it's not considered a father. So, it's a Yisayma. So, if the equivalent by a Jewish girl who would be Mechayim, you would be liable for Meitzah Shema. Oh, okay, and it's a problem with the game. That's why I need to have a Pasek to school game, because even though you're a Yisayma, it doesn't make a difference. Yisayma is going to be Chayim. But Eliyam would be Yisrael Kagav Nebuchadnezzar. If you say like Rabbi Yisi, Bereb Chanina, that holds you being Meitzah Shema on the Yisayma Ketan, would be part of Hashanah. Has to be Yisrael Potter if by a Jewish girl, a bona fide from, from birth, everything, you tell me that there's a Petur, because she's a Yisayma, no Banas and Labian either. So, Begadim and Bayad, do I have to tell you that there's not going to be game? Of course not. Every game is inherently Yisayma. 
oh, it's a kishpar, so it says, Rabbi, you can prove that obviously a regular Yisemi Ketana is Chai. And that's why you have to exclude that of Geirim, because they're not Besulas Yisro, Besulas Geirim. So that's Machlik, is regarding this halacha. Now, Omer Shlokish, he says something, he says on this halacha, HaMaiti Shemin Ala Ketana, if someone spreads false rumors on a minor, so before we speak about a Yisema, now he's saying a related halacha, not actually a Yisema, but a minor. So she's an eight-year-old girl that he got married to, and he comes to the father the next day, and he says, hey, he's part of it. He's going to be examined, even though it turns out he was lying. Why? Shema says in the passage, before we were being medayik on the word avi, that excludes the same. If you hold like that opinion, it has to be your father. If there's no father, then we said not. But he was saying the word hanaira. Naira is a pubescent girl. Naira moli dibar akasav. What does this mean, a naira moli? Meaning, as Rashi explains, we had this on the previous talk, <laughs> in many places it says naira, without the hay at the end. It just says, nun ayin reish. Here it's written, naira mali, which means with an extra hay. Why are you saying with the, with the extra hay? What are you coming to say? Say, it has to be davka a naira. It has to be a girl that's a pubescent girl to exclude a minor. So the whole Allah of Mitzvah Shem only applies to a naira and not by a katana. But maskim la rabah He asks, wait a second, I don't understand what you're saying. Time with the chesed bahanayr. You're telling me Rish Lakish that the reason why you're excluding from the Allah Chalmei Tisham and if the husband made up this false rumor, he doesn't have to pay a hundred silver coins because it's only hanayr and not a katana. Halava chibar if not. If you didn't have this drasha, but didn't say the extra hey, have a I would have said, yeah, I feel like a katana that even for a minor you're gonna be chayv mei tisham. How could you say that? Read the psukim haksev that that's if it's fake news. What happens if it's vmms hayadavar? What happens if it was real news? Let's say Shitaki didn't have the Sulam. What's the statement? You're going to take out the girl to have the entry of her house, you're going to stone her. Church explains exactly what the question is, but the question sounds like is that she's not, she doesn't get punished. A katana. How could you say the Parashal Maitashama is talking about a katana if you didn't have the extra A, but it says that girl is going to get stoned? A katana, a, a girl under bas mitzvah doesn't get stoned. Obviously, you're talking about a nair. So Ella, rather said to the Gemara, you're right. It, 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 what we're saying is true, but from a very different perspective. Kan nair. Here, where it says mali with hay, it's not come to teach you regarding this case itself to exclude a katana. Because you're right, without a jerusha, I would of course exclude a katana. Like we said, because she's not basa and she can't, can't get punished. You know what it's coming to tell us? It's coming to tell us hakal markoim. But everywhere else it says Naira in the Torah where it's written without a hey, Shenema Na'ar, a fella Ketana B'mashma that's going to even include a minor. And that's what we're saying over here. Here it says Naira with a hey, because you're right. Here it's not possible to be a minor. When we're telling you with a hey, we're coming to teach you that whatever else it says without a hey, it's coming to tell you that it could even be with a katana, for example, by Oynas and Mavhata, where it doesn't have with a hay, it would even be by a katana. That's what we're teaching you. Right, we know, since we know here it's excluding katana, and we're telling you the hay, muzay. That's obviously telling us that the hay is when it's going to be specifically an adult, a nair. But without the hay, it's going to be even a katana, like by Oynas and Mavhata, then you still give me That's what we're teaching you. Not that we need to teach you to here, but it's from here to everyone else. Thank you to any time.